So the next step is to create our home page. Currently, the home page is the login page. It is blank. Let's go to the component first. This is the muscle, yeah. The template is just a skin. Import uh, form group, form builder, validators from at Angular forms. So most business applications will use uh, forms. Let's define user form. Log in form is a form group. So it has two fields, your email and your password to log in. And now in your constructor, you can create private property called FB, which is an instance of form builder class. So use this class to build forms. Whenever your component initializes, use this login forms equal to this form builder like group. It's a form group. This form group has uh, basically two fields. The first field is called email, and it defaults a blank, and it is required. Validators required. You can leave your email blank. And validators email. It has to be a valid email address. Validators. Uh, minimum length is six. And validators, uh, max length is 256. You can see the validator is just an array of things that uh, has to be evaluated to true. What is wrong? OK, I forgot to put the curly brace brackets. So everything has to be uh, supplied in the curly brackets as an object. So we have the email field. Um, we have another field which is uh, actually um, password. Again, it is a string. Uh, the array of validators required. Minimum length is six. It's 256. Now, you save this guy. And we need to create another function, which is on submit. When you submit the form to the database, let's just use a placeholder. It doesn't do anything except console log. Form has login form has been submitted. I have a huge microphone, and that microphone is uh, right uh, next to my keyboard. It interferes with my typing uh, quite a bit. Okay, console log. So we have built a user form. It has two fields. Now let's use this user form on the front end at the template. So this template is fairly straightforward. Uh, you just consume whatever you define in your component. So first, let's do some styling. Uh, division class equals uh, mat h1. You want to use a large font. And everything is centered. Because you want your login form to be centrally aligned. Now let's use one material library artifact called mat card. So this mat card has a header, uh, mat card header, and the mat card also has a mat card content. So in the header, let's define a header. It's called login. It's a mat card title, login. Save. Now we have a login field. The content of the meta card is obviously your user form. Form. Um, okay, let's uh, do because half the screen is taken by that uh, browser, so let's uh, try to not make the code too long. Login form. So here, your form group is called a login form. Um, it has square brackets because the login form is not a string; it's a variable that is defined here in your uh, component. It needs to be evaluated. That's why you have square bracket on the right hand side. And let's define something else. Um, 
when you submit this form, you need to invoke a function called onSubmit. So you use uh, regular parentheses because ng submit is an event happens on the front end. Uh, the user click on submit button. Um, so the event it's parentheses. You need to evaluate something on the right hand side. It's square bracket. Let's do mad form field. The first form field obviously is uh, your email. When you log in, you need to provide your email. Let's put a little bit of style appearance equals outline. So, mat label email. The first field is an email. Oops. So, it is input field, mat input uh, as a directive to show this input field is a material input field, so we can use all the goodies. That comes with the material library. It has to be an email address. It is required. You cannot leave it blank. And uh, the place holder is email. Form control name. So here you do not need any square bracket because the form control name is just a string. It's called an email, which you define in your here component. So this is fairly straightforward. And once you have this input field you save, you can see whole here has an email uh, input field. And it cannot be left blank, otherwise you will get error. If you supply something that does not make sense, you get a red border as well. Hello.com. Now the red border disappears because it's valid email address. Let's spice things up a little bit by adding font awesome button mat prefix mat icon button it's a fake button so it's disabled um, now here we can use mat icon which is uh, email disabled needs to be true so here we add an email icon before this input field so suggesting oh this email field um, this is for cosmetics now we can copy the whole thing. Oops. So we copy the whole thing now. Let's go down to this uh, email. Let's change it to password. password input type is password so when you type it appears as dots placeholder is password form control name is password and the, the icon you need to change it to another icon called a VPN key and I want to put a break line break here so you have email you have password uh, two different fields. We know type the password because it's of type password. It doesn't show anything. Um, and then you need a submit button. You need to submit the form. Let's indent them a little bit. The submit button is just a button. Um, it's fairly straightforward. Um, button mat raised button colors equal to accent which stands out against the primary background background class is equal to uh, that don't define a class yet um, this is called submit so now you have a button let's put a line break so we have a button and uh, it is or you can submit any time which is not what we wanted so we want to add something disabled is equal to uh, login form dot not valid if the login form is not valid it's disabled so it grays out unless you provide some valid email address claire at kitten.com and some character password that's at least six characters then it, you can submit it and we can also uh, add a little bit of style uh, because button is left aligned. Usually it's right aligned, so that's red right aligned. So division class equals between. Um, 
So let's put some dummy object division, empty division here. And we can then copy this button uh, to be a sibling of that empty division. So paste the button thing. Now save. Um, it moves to the right hand side. So if you provide something valid, you can submit. So buttons move to the right hand side. Okay, I think that's enough for this video and basically it gives you some, yeah, design and stuff for this UI component. If you want to spice up your, your application, you can also uh, define some other styles here. I won't go into the detail. Uh, you can define some of the padding and things so you can manipulate the native uh, mat card objects. So here we define a bunch of style. Um, overwrite the default behavior and then we can just add a style to that uh, background color to that login um, header. So login header we can have a class equals uh, background primary 100. So we define this background primary 100 in the style sheet. These are pure cosmetics, so you don't have to um, worry about these guys. Um, so basically, makes your app appear a little bit more professional. So what happens is that you have a login page. It has a uh, this kind of shades. Uh, make the input form a little bit more professional. When you have valid email and uh, valid password, you can then submit it. Some styling. I think that's enough for today's video. Thank you.